Hi there, it's Joan and we're in Joan's Kitchen and today from Joan's Kitchen we have a very special guest, our friend Bill Griffin who is visiting from Western Illinois and Bill loves to cook and it's Bill's birthday today on the day that we're taping and so from Joan's Kitchen today we're going to be preparing one of Bill's specialties, something that he calls Billy Beans. So Bill, why don't you tell us about your recipe and what you use in your recipe? Sure, it's a side dish, it's just simply a baked bean dish and it'll Almost everybody has their own recipe for baked beans. This is one of my favorites, and I get requested a lot for uh, barbecues, cookouts, things like that. It's a wonderful summer dish, but you can have it in the wintertime, too. So anyway, we have quite a few ingredients here that we'll talk about. What we put in here to get ready is we'll use about a half of a regular-sized pepper and a small to medium onion. For me today, we're using bacon that we had left over from uh, breakfast yesterday and you can also use ham cut up diced up in smaller pieces or my favorite actually sometimes is to use kielbasa which i cook on the grill and if i have leftover from that i put it in a bag in the freezer take it out when i'm ready for it and put it right in the baked beans and then oh. for those of you who don't know kielbasa is like a smoked polar sausage so if you're looking for a kielbasa you, they're usually in the butcher section and it's in a plastic thing it's like a u-shaped big yes. sausage good uh, the other thing that I use is molasses. I like the full flavor molasses because it, it really uh, absorbs into it. Now today we're using uh, just a can of pork and beans and uh, what I do is I'll drain these. We'll drain these and we'll put them in the crock pot and then we'll add the other ingredients in with them. I have found that they make a lot of different kinds of really good baked beans, but you really don't need to get the expensive kind to make this dish because it's the flavorings that you put in that makes it good. So I just, today we're using this brand. You can use the cheapest ones they have if you want to, which I've also done before. Uh, we're also using open pit barbecue sauce. You can use your favorite barbecue sauce. This is I know, one of Joan's favorites and mine too. It's really good. It's an old uh, brand name. They don't advertise much anymore, but if you can find them, they're really nice to use. And we have some uh, liquid smoke. You have to be careful with this stuff, gang. If you've ever used it before, a couple drops, like a half a teaspoon for, for this can of beans would be plenty. You can always add a little more if you like a more smoky flavor, but add that later because once you put it in, you can't take any out, as many of you know. Also some kitchen bouquet. This is used more for the uh, visual presentation of the dish, which you think, well, why do you need a visual presentation? You really don't, but it really, it darkens up the, the entire dish. It makes it look like it's been cooked in the oven for hours and hours. And uh, it's a nice, it, it, the flavoring, is, is negligible, but it makes a nice presentation. And lastly, but not least, we use brown sugar. Notice I use dark brown sugar, just because I think it, it goes better with this particular recipe. And I will use at least a, a full cup and maybe almost a cup and a fourth, I would say, for, for this size dish. We uh, vary these recipes on, on uh, the size that you're making, and if you experiment with a little bit, you'll find out just the right amounts that you like for yourself. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the history. We're using prepared pork and beans here, but baked beans are a dish that is kind of a historic dish here in the United States. And I actually have here a bean pot, which is from Durgan Park Restaurant, which is an old time restaurant in Boston. So traditional baked beans were made with white beans or navy beans, which are small white beans, and they would be cooked with some salt pork. Salt pork is essentially pork belly, which is what we make bacon from, that's been cured in salt. And that was an ingredient that was used hundreds of years ago because that was a way to cure the meat. You would also take an onion, have a cut up onion on there, a little bit of molasses, probably some mustard powder and water, and that would all be baked together at a very low temperature for about six hours. And speaking of beans, beans have been cultivated for almost 7,000 years, uh, more than 7,000 years, 7,000 BC, starting in Thailand. That's the earliest time that we know about beans being cultivated. There's two basic varieties of beans. There's Western beans and Eastern beans. The Eastern beans are the beans that originated in Europe and Asia and the Western beans originated here in the Americas. And those are the beans that we tend to be more familiar with. Things like kidney beans, navy beans, which is what this is made out of, even green beans. Um, if we are making beans from scratch, if we are gonna be making the traditional baked beans instead of starting with a can of prepared beans, 
we would probably need to soak the beans overnight or do a quick soak where you put them in water and bring it to a boil and let them sit for an hour because the beans are dried and we need to get them ready for cooking. It's really pretty hard to find fresh beans around here these days. Alternatively, if you have an instant pot, which is an electronic pressure cooker, you can cook the beans without soaking them, which is a real time saver. But for me personally, if I was gonna be making baked beans from scratch, I would soak the beans and then do the long, slow bake in the oven to get that really good flavor um, steeped into them. The one last thing that I wanna say about beans is that beans have been a very portable food. They're packed with protein. It's a really good source of protein for people who don't eat a lot of meat. And if you have beans and rice and you eat them together, it actually makes a protein that's just as complete as eating meat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our raw ingredients and get ready to start cooking. The one other little thing that we have here is some butter and we're gonna be sauteing the onion and the pepper in here before we put them in the pot to cook. And so we're gonna get everything chopped up and ready to go. We'll be back to you when we're ready to start cooking. Okay, we're back. Um, Bill has gone ahead and chopped up the onions and the peppers and we have some butter that we've melted in this cast iron pan. And we're just gonna start out showing what it looks like when we start sauteing it and then we're gonna come back when it's done so you can see the color that we want to achieve in the onions. So sure. Bill, go ahead. We want to get these good and caramelized, folks. So we have pretty high heat on this. Get the last little bit out of that. It smells good already. It does. I wish you could smell it. I wanted to mention, you can see that we've got our aprons on now because we both have solid color shirts where if the grease spatted it would make spots on it. So Bill's got like a vintage kind of industrial apron here. And since I mentioned the beans being from Thailand, I have an apron that we picked up in the market in Thailand. So that explains our aprons here. And this one actually reminds me of uh, Galesburg, Illinois, where we just flew in from, from like the uh, engineers on the train where these came yeah. yeah. So, so we're gonna come back in a few minutes when these have been sauteed and they're caramelized to the color that Bill wants them to be before we start. So we'll be back in just a moment. And we're back. We had a little technical difficulty, and so we're going to recap what happened in the interim while we lost what we had just taped. So Bill was going over the sequence of how he assembles the beans in our crock pot to go ahead and cook it. So some of the stuff is in here already, and Rich, if you want to kind of zoom in so you can see what's in there, and then Bill is going to describe the process for layering the ingredients in here. Absolutely. So we took our beans that were drained and we put a layer of those down. And the reason I do this in layers, you wouldn't have to, but you have then you won't have to stir it quite as often. And then while we're on that, and just before we really get going here, when you stir those beans, stir them uh, as little as you can, because if you stir them too much, you find that they get what I call mushy. They kind of just get like the consistency of mashed potatoes. That you do not want. So we layer our beans in. We took our sauteed uh, onions and, and peppers, delicious. We put in some of our seasonings. We put in our uh, kitchen bouquet and we put in our liquid smoke. And remember my little warning there, not too much. I put about maybe half as much liquid smoke as you think you'll need. You can always add some later, but you can't take any away. And then we put in uh, some of our brown sugar, and, and we left enough to do another layer without the little spices, so I'm going to put in the rest of the beans right now. And I just wanted to mention, Bill had mentioned that we drained the beans. We did drain the beans. We did not rinse the beans. Right. So it's just getting some of the liquid out of it, but not all of it. And then we'll put in the rest of our brown sugar, and I'll sprinkle that around. Put in the rest of our barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, and again, you can experiment with with some other things with this. I uh, don't know if this got taped in the part that got erased accidentally, but uh, you can use yellow mustard. You can use ketchup, and uh, find the the flavor. Don't be afraid to experiment with things. And then I'm going to put before I. Oh, I see. We saved a little bit of the the bacon. The bacon, yes. As Justin Wilson would say, if it, Justin Wilson happens to be, you know, everybody had their favorite cook they learned how to do some dishes from. And uh, one of the guys who was uh, not only a wonderful cook, but kind of a folklore legend kind of a person from Louisiana was Justin Wilson. And if you ever go down that way, or even on YouTube, I think you can still get some of his lessons. He's just a charming man from the South, has stories to tell about 
uh, not only the dishes that he cooks, but a lot of the people down there. He's a, he's a hero in that area. And you would, if you look his uh, cooking, it shows up, watch a couple of them, you'll like him too. But anyway, now I'm, I'm going to do just a little bit of stirring. And I use a wooden spoon like this to do the stirring because I want to, uh, I don't want to disturb those beans any more than I have to. I have found that in my family, when I have cooked these beans before, everybody always volunteers. Oh, you want me to stir those beans for you? You want me to stir those beans for you? I say, well, okay, but just lightly, carefully. And the reason they wanted to do it, they wanted to taste the, sp the spoon and see how they're doing and then go rinse it off and ask again in about five minutes. No, you don't have to cook them that often. Now on the top, especially when they start to get done, I like to do this. And Rich, if you could zoom in again, uh, I like to take this molasses and kind of make a little design on there like this. And then as it bakes, it bakes in that way. It's, it works out really well. And now we're going to uh, turn the, fire up the heat on this thing. What I usually do in, with a crock pot is I'll start off at a higher heat. And I don't use a lid because I want it to evaporate. And, okay. and let that let it that helps it thicken up. It's a good up. thing you said it because I'm armed here with the lid. I, I was saw ready to that. Cover I it saw up. you reaching for that. But anyway, we'll start at a higher heat. But then, and you can kind of feel the outside a little bit when it starts to get hot. Then we'll turn it down to a very low heat. You can cook these beans for anywhere from uh, two or three hours to up to four or five or six hours, and uh, just according to how the consistency looks, you'll know. When you see them, when it looks right, when you can pick up the spoon and the beans look like they're ready to eat, which they don't right now, but they will. When we yeah, get let's them get out. one more shot here, what this looks like. It kind of looks like a mess right now, and Bill really wanted to let you know what they look like when you first put them in the pot and how different they're going to look when we're done cooking them. So we are going to be back in a few hours with the Billy Beans ready to taste. Well, we are back here and it's kind of the moment of truth. These billy beans have been simmering in the crock pot for four hours. We started them out on high just to get the crock pot warmed up and then we turned them to low and Chef Bill here thought they were still running a little bit hot so the last hour and a half or so we've been just keeping them on the keep warm setting but they're still bubbling away. So cameraman, if you'd like to come over here and take a look in there and Chef Bill has also uh, sprinkled some molasses over the top in a little pattern. And Bill, I'm gonna hand this over to you so we can have a little taste here and see what we think. I will sure do that. Before we get to that final taste though, I would like to thank the Qualls, Richard and Joan, for allowing me to come in and join them in their kitchen and having this fun exercise. And I wish you guys could smell this. Cause it does smell divine. Does, the whole kitchen just smells real good. You already got a shot there. Well, so. thank you for spending your birthday cooking beans in our kitchen. Hey. <laughs> so let's dish up a little bit in here. And to quote my hero that I mentioned in Joan's last show, Justin Wilson from the South, they should be really good. Maybe one of us, I guarantee. We'll see. So we also put it in this little white cup so you would get a better idea of what the color of the finished product was. And we had shown you before when everything was in there, you could see the green onions and the bacon and uh, the green peppers and the bacon and the onions all kind of separated. And it was like a lot of different colors, but now it's come together like in a perfect meld. And I think that kitchen bouquet has really it's, kind of browned mm -hmm. it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take sure. a little taste here. After you. Delicious. If somebody asked me what was in it, I don't think that I would be able to identify. I would think that there was vinegar, which there is in the barbecue sauce that we use. And I think I could take the taste the bacon and the onion, but that's about it. One last tip, folks. If you think your beans are a little too runny, Turn the heat up and let them cook a little longer. If you think that they've gotten too thick and starting to crust, put in some more ketchup or barbecue sauce and stir them up a little bit. They'll be okay. And the other thing is a lot of people like hot sauce, like a little zing in their beans, but you can get too much of that stuff. And so uh, what I usually do, we have a lot of Swedish people in our family and stuff. We don't use a lot of high seasonings, but I just put a, a, a jar of Tabasco or some other hot sauce out and people can add their own to their bowl. It works just fine that way. So from from our home to your, yours, this is our last episode. No, not our last episode. We're, 
winding up here <laughs> from Joan's Kitchen, and we'll be back again, and Chef Bill may even be around to make another guest experience. So until next time, ciao Thanks, for everybody. now. God bless.